Hello everybody, it's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter and welcome to my weekly episode for Tuesday, October the 3rd, 2023 and it's episode number 235 and I hope you've had a very good week and by the looks of things this week, as far as weather's concerned, looks like it's going to be pretty good too. So yeah, kind of a little bit warm for October. Yeah, but whatever, let's not bitch about it. Cold weather will be right around the corner, right? Okay, let's take a look at what I've been working on this week and talk a little bit about the intricacies of what I've been doing. So this one you've seen in bits and pieces, but it's now completely done. And this is called the Whimsical Turkey Table Runner, Thanksgiving Table Runner, as you can tell, um, with a little bit of a comical element to it, which is kind of fun. Now, this was an in the hoop project that I did an in the hoop applique project. And you know, I love those kind of things. Actually, this was supposed to be a couple of table runners, but I thought if I joined two of the table runners together, then it would make it, or sorry, placemats. It was supposed to be a couple of placemats. Kept my head going here. A uh, couple of placemats and I decided to put the two of them together and it made a table runner. And yes, I purposely put one of the turkeys upside down before somebody writes me a comment and goes, oh my God, you got a turkey upside down, gobble, gobble. Uh, no, <laughs> I did that on purpose. Why? Think about it. When you're sitting at a table with a table runner and it's got a very specific design, um, only half the people at your dining room table can see the table runner right way up. This way, Everybody gets a shot of it the right way up on either side of the table. Um, so that's why I did that. Um, it says gobble till you wobble, which is kind of fun as well. And probably very true when it comes to um, Thanksgiving. Because we overeat, don't we? Um, and by the way, Thanksgiving for us here in Canada is next weekend. so Or this weekend coming, actually. So yeah, it's earlier than what Americans uh, celebrate. So I'm very happy with the way this turned out. It's a lot of fun. I don't know if I'm going to give it at somewhere down the road as a gift to anybody. I've been debating whether my sister would want it or not. Uh, it's not that long a table runner. So I don't know if this would be something she would want. I've already given her a Halloween one that I know she's already put out in her house because I saw her Facebook page uh, with that. That makes me very happy. It means that she liked it. Um, so that's great. So uh, maybe I'll just hang on to this one for a little bit longer. Um, maybe I'll put it out uh, when I do my fall decor. Um, take a look at other things that I've got. This might look good in actually my main living room on the table. Just thinking out loud here. Let's move on. <laughs> okay, this one is a little bit of an interesting story behind it. This was a pattern that I believe Stephanie Stitches put me onto because of the gnomes. And I think it's really cute. And it turned out really quite nice. Um, by the way, when you look at these and you think that my borders are a little wonky, I want to assure you they are not. It's just the way I take pictures of them, the way I kind of clip them to my display board. Um, that makes them look that way. Yeah, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, so this one, uh, it wasn't a difficult one to do. However, the problem ran with the second row. The first row is this one with all the triangles, okay? Now, you know, when you sew triangles together, because these gray pieces are triangles as well, you can't just lay them, you know, straight edges to each other and sew them because it won't fit properly. Um, you have to have about a quarter of an inch at the ends uh, when you line them up. And the instructions did say to do that, and I followed those instructions. In fact, I didn't eyeball it. I actually measured uh, in each case. I put in a little mark on here where I knew that would show me where to lay the next triangle so I'd get it right. So that went along very nicely. I have to admit, I don't like sewing triangles for some reason. I find them a little bit tedious. I mean, they're not hard, but, you know, I just don't like them for some reason. I don't know. But anyway, so I got that row done. So I'm working on this row. And this row is underneath each one of these little trees is a block. Very simple block underneath the trees. You've got like two blocks on either side of another skinnier little, or two units around another skinny little piece for the trunk. Okay. 
easy to do. Similarly, this one, you made a couple of uh, half square triangles kind of a thing, cut them and away you went. Not a problem. Knock those off pretty quickly. However, when I went to attach this row, the bases of the trees and the gnomes with the triangles, well, this piece came out short by quite a bit, by quite a bit. I double checked and triple checked my measurements. It said that these blocks were supposed to be uh, three and a half, no, two and a half, no, three and a half, three and a half inches tall by six inches long. Well, no, 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 no. That's where it went wrong. It didn't say whether that was finished or unfinished in this pattern. So, you know, basically, I don't know, right or wrong. I assume that if they do not tell you differently, when they refer to a block as you're making it, it's unfinished, the dimensions that they're giving you. So I did some mathematical calculations and indeed figured out that these blocks needed to be six and a half inches, not six, in order for them to line up where they were supposed to go, as you see here. So I thought, okay, I didn't go into the company. This is called, this came from the Block, Par block Party Company. Um, I went to their site to see if there was corrections to the pattern. Now, I've got to get into the habit of doing this before I start any pattern uh, because that's what's causing me some grief. Um, I don't check for that. I mean, technically speaking, you shouldn't have to check for that, should you? Um, you know, the pattern you expect when you pay for a pattern, it is correct. But that doesn't seem to be the case, I'm finding. So I went in, looked for correction. There weren't any. Um, but they had a little chat button off to the side. And I thought, well, I'll give this a chat, a check. So I did. And I got a real person, not an AI, but a real person. So I told her what my problem was. First thing she said to me was, well, did I do the triangles right? And I said, yep. Um, I checked that all out. The triangles are the way they're supposed to be. I followed that. She says, well, we have a video. <clears throat> excuse me, that shows you how to do this. And I went, okay, where's the link for that? Oh, and she says, well, I can uh, hook you up with that. So she did. And I said, okay, thank you. But I said to her, my suspicion is that that second row, the measurements are wrong. It should be six and a half, not six inches. She's, and, I, and she says, oh, we've had this pattern tested many times before we published it. And it, the pattern's correct. Okay, that's your story. I'm thinking... I'm second guessing myself. I'm going, okay, did I do something wrong? So I watched the video. Now, funny thing about the video was they never mentioned the, uh, the size of anything, not the finished size or unfinished size. I thought, okay, that's not good. Um, like I was hoping that the person putting it together, and I think she was the creator of the pattern, was going to say that those blocks in the second row uh, were would measure three and a half by either six or six and a half inches. Um, nope, she never mentioned it at all. So I watched the video, I stopped the video, I paused it, and no, I'm doing everything right. Their measurements are out. Now, what I'm thinking is that after it was tested and everything and the final version of the pattern came out, somebody, when they were uh, typing it up, forgot to put 0.5 after the six to make it six and a half inches because that is the only way it was going to work. So I went back online and got that person again and I said what I just told you. Their answer to me was, well, since you're so unhappy with the pattern, we'd be more than willing to refund you the price of the pattern or send you another one of our patterns for free. Well, okay. So you're not going to turn around and agree with me that there's a minor mistake. It needs to be corrected. Okay. But I'd said, nope, it's all right. I made it work. Thanks for the offer, but no thanks. Um, yeah, this is another company I don't think I'm going to put on my list uh, to get another one of their patterns from. If I do, then I'm going to really, really double check everything to make sure the measurements are right. I don't know what it is, but bad patterns seem to find me or I find them every time. Um, 
you know, it was very nice of her to offer me compensation for it. But what I really wanted was for them to check it out and, you know, make a correction because other people will buy this pattern. And one of my subscribers has bought this pattern now. So, you know, let me know how it works out for you. But just watch before you sew that whole second row together, you know, make one of the blocks according to their instructions. Make a couple of them, see what you end up with. Unfinished, that block, the one for the gnome's feet and the one with the Christmas tree trunk in it, should measure six and a half inches in order to fit. It'll be interesting to see what you find, see if you verify it. I mean, I'm still thinking in my head, did I make a mistake that I'm just not seeing? But I don't know how I could have. But anyways, um, I did make that correction, but, and the lady warned me about this on the phone. She says, well, that's when, if you've done it that way, then there may be a problem with the uh, borders. Uh, you know, you may have to do something to compensate for that. And she was right. I did. And if you look at it closely you will notice that up here at the top, I have a little extra red piece here, but I echo that down in the diagonally opposite corner. Up here, it worked out doing the same thing except with the green, except it did not work out down in this corner. <laughs> no. And you're going to say, well, why didn't you put just another piece of green here? Well, if you look, if I had done that, then this one match this one up here, if you see what I mean. And if you look over here, I kind of fudged it along here too. I kind of had to shorten this one green block to get this to fit in. It's kind of subtle, except now it's now that I've told you, your eyes are going to go to that, aren't you? Aren't you? Uh, every time when you look at it. But yeah. But you know something? I still like it. I think it's very cute. I did uh, quilting on it. Uh, a gnome and snowflakes. If you look at it closely, you can see the gnomes are running sort of sideways. Well, they run every which way across it. So yeah, this is okay. It'll survive. It's fine. But again, why is it that I always get the patterns with the mistakes? Okay, this one is the kit that I bought at Ye Old Fabric Store Shop in Stratford when we went to Stratford and Cambridge area a couple of weeks ago. And I thought it was kind of cute, put it all together. It hasn't been bound yet. I just, it's fresh off of Lucy uh, late yesterday and I quilted it. Um, so today I'm hoping to get to it to... Um, do the binding and I think it's kind of cute. It was a fast, very fast kit. Um, however, when I look at it now, I'm thinking like Walter said, why are the gnomes going that way? And I said, because that's what the pattern called for. But then I got thinking about it when he said that it, these gnomes were cut out of a panel that it came with. What I could have done if I'd been a little smarter, the panel had four gnomes on it in total. I could have turned the gnomes 90 degrees so that they're up and down and had them run across the length of the quilt or of the table runner. And I could have had one, if I use four, I could have had one with his hat pointing up at the top, then one upside down, then one up, one upside down. So, you know, that same thing I said with the uh, whimsical turkey table runner wherever you sat at the table, you would see the quilt or the table runner the right way up. Um, but I didn't think of that at the time because I was following the pattern. And well, that's okay. I still think it's kind of cute and it'll look great once the, uh, I get the binding on it. However, I discovered one little problem after the fact. After I got the appliques down, you see this? There's a, a lighter streak that runs here. But there's one on this one too, but it's a different size and it's not in exactly the same place. And here, and I'll show you this guy in a second, same thing. So I don't know if those are supposed to be there 
Are they supposed to be part of the artistic detail? They almost look like they're faded or they weren't. There was something wrong with the machine when it was printing this fabric, the, these things, that it dragged something across it or whatever. I don't know. So I've written to um, Yale Fabric Shop stating my problem. But I did notice when I was on their uh, site and they were showing this kit, their picture of the finished kit, theirs had the same problem, which would say to me that it's either supposed to be a design element, which I don't think serves any purpose, or there was a flaw in the manufacturing of this bolt of panels that no one has picked up on. So I'm going to see what they tell me about it, if they respond to it or not. I don't know. I mean, I've got the table runner done and it looks fine and really that's a little detail no one would notice when it's on a table probably but it kind of bothers me that i bought possibly bought defective fabric i don't know but anyways now this little guy is this guy it's what i did with one of the extra gnomes on the panel in fact they tell you you can do this they have instructions printed right on the panel for this so i made him he's cute um i didn't make the the last one into one of these because to be honest what am i going to do with stuffies <laughs> i don't do anything with stuffies so right now he's sitting up behind me on uh, the shelf uh let's see there he is peeking over my shoulder yeah kind of cute so yeah live and learn now back to gnomes okay these are cute um i really like these this is a guy gnome and the girl gnome and this is a freestanding lace project you do it in the hoop and i absolutely love them they take about an hour a piece to make and i'm going to make a whole bunch of these and i'm going to give these as uh christmas gifts uh to you know the ladies at uh this my local quilt store and things like that they'd make great little things to tie to a top of a package under your tree you can put them on your tree they've even come with a little hole in the top for putting a ribbon in them so i just love freestanding lace and you know these ones i thought were really cool um okay so let's see what's that take me to that's all my current projects. I have lots more to work on, of course, um, don't we all? So, uh, reminders. Sewing with Stephanie and Stephen, Wednesday, uh, this week, as uh, as every week. It's on Wednesday, 9 a.m. Show, show notes are in, or the, the link is in the show notes below. Mm -hmm. And I made some purchases. I made a lot of purchases this week, actually, but I did, this was a purchase I made about a week ago and has just come in and Missouri Star Quilt had a sale on three meter, well, three yards actually of 108 fabric. Um, that's wide back fabric. And so I bought some of it and I just love it. Um, and I mean, I couldn't beat the price, $39 American. But when I worked it all out, I bought four packages of this you'll see different designs here's two of the designs here's two other designs sorry about the glare on the picture i mean there are actually three of them no all four of them are the same design but in a different color wave and i think they're really nice and at three thirty nine dollars plus the shipping and everything the tax i had to pay and then doing the exchange on into canadian dollars this was about half the price of what I would pay for the same quantity of 108 inch wide back fabric at my local quilt store. So I'm going to be checking out Missouri Star Quilt a little more often because they came really fast. The price is really good, even with the exchange rate. Um, their shipping price is excellent for Canada. They've got it down pat. So yeah, I think I'm going to be buying more things from them as time goes by. So I got those. And you remember I was talking about Invisifil thread. Well, I thought I got Invisifil, Invisifil thread. And I saw this on Amazon and it had like, uh, what, six different spools in the whole bit. Uh, it turns out it is by Wonderfill, which Invisifil, they make that, but it isn't Invisifil. It's actually thread for English paper piecing and appliques, it says on the box. It's very nice 
uh, thread. It cost me about $30 for this package of it, which is okay. Um, but it was my fault. I don't know why when I saw this, I was thinking Invisifil. It's not Invisifil. So yeah, uh, but I have this and yeah, it won't come to a waste. I'm sure I'll be able to use it somewhere down the road. Uh, okay, so I bought that and that's everything I bought. Um, with the exception of all the fabric I bought at the shop hop. Yes, I was on a shop hop this past weekend. Discovered a couple of stores I did not know existed. Was very happy to do it. But the shop hop was, well, it's quite an adventure. Okay. Um, I talked, We Walter and I talked about it a little bit yesterday on So, uh, so on Stephen and Walter Live. Whoa, my head, my lips are not matching up at all. Uh, so if you tuned into that or have seen that, you know what we were saying about some of the complications, problems, weird things about the shop hop. Well, anyways, I've done a whole video. So this week on So Chatty, we will be featuring for the whole video, our adventures with the shop hop. And on that, I'll be showing you them, what I bought, what a thousand dollars bought me. Yeah, I know it was a lot. But remember, I have a budget for all of this, so I'm not in the poorhouse yet. Will be if I keep going at this rate, though. Um, but anyway, so tune into So Chatty this Friday um, to see and hear all about the shop hop. Okay, so let's talk about the retreat. The retreat is full, as you probably already know, but I have established a waiting list, so don't despair. There's always people who drop out, and if you're on the waiting list, you might get in. Um, so we're coming a little closer to that date. So just a reminder to those of you that are registered for the retreat, if you want to send me one, one only, one only picture of a favorite creation that I can put into the slideshow that'll be, that I'll present during the course of the retreat, please do, do not write anything about it. You do not. All I need is your first and your last name because that will go next to your creation because I'll create a slide. Oops. <laughs> uh, new feature on my Mac. Yeah, it does fun things like that. So if I happen to put up my fingers like this. Pretty balloons. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, I have to keep my hands down here because if I do this. Ooh, spacey. You can give that a thumbs up. <laughs> oh, I'm such a kid. Okay, keep the hands still. All right. So what was I talking about? Squirrel. Um. Yeah. Oh, the uh, retreat pictures. Okay. One. No explanation. Your name. First and last. Deadline is October the 14th. I need time to put these all together into the slideshow. Now, some... I've had a couple of people send me a variety of pictures and go, they don't know which one they should show. I should pick it for them. I will not do that. I will not do that. No, you commit. You pick the one you want me to show. I'm not going to do it for you. No. <laughs> so don't be trying to put that on my shoulders. Okay, so... What else happened this week? Well, we had uh, a special guest, a visitor, a friend of mine from out west, Kim Jameson Hurst and her husband, Gary. And Kim and, and Gary run the Quilter's Way. And so I thought that that is a paid membership that I have belonged to for six years, for as long as I've been quilting. So I'm a founding member, as Kim calls me. Uh, and uh, it's a great group. And it's really great for especially beginner quilters, but it's great for anybody. Uh, there's so much, so much to learn there. And there's uh, a great social element as well to it all. And so I decided to interview Kim and talk about the quilters way, why she started it, what to expect from it and what you can expect in the future from it. Cause it's an ongoing kind of thing. It's always evolving and developing. So you should check out that interview. Kim is a wonderful person. And I said to her, she says, Ooh, well, I don't know if I'm really prepared to do an interview. I said, good. I want this to be candid. 
I want people to see her personality because her, she's very, she does a YouTube channel called Chatterbox Quilts as well. And those videos are excellent. They're very professional. And I said to her, but her true personality doesn't come out. And I think a lot of people are attracted to membership sites based upon the personality of the person running it. And she is a great person, as I've said. So I'm hoping that in that interview, that came out. And uh, many of you have already seen it and sent kind comments about it. And uh, if you haven't seen it yet, there's a link for it in the show notes below. Check it out. Okay, so that was a busy week. So that takes me to um, my demo section. And I have decided that I'm going, I'm starting to sort out all the quilts that I have made and trying to organize them into, you know, ones that are potential gifts, ones I want to keep and ones I want to donate. So I have started the process and I started with the small projects first. Like I've got a lot of table runners and a lot of placemats and little wall hangings and things like that. So this is part one of a video that I've made showing you these little projects and what I intend to do with some of them. I thought it, it's time for me to sort out some of my smaller quilting projects to see what I have and to decide, am I going to gift these, save them for a future hostess gift or something? Most of them are table runners or table toppers or small wall style quilts or donate them or what am I going to do with them? And I don't even know what's in the pile. And so I'm using two technologies here to show you what I've got. But here's the pile. It's a big pile and there's a basket full as well. So I am going to go through these, show them to you and talk about them, make some decisions and see what I come up with. Okay, so let's get started, shall we? Um, this is a very awkward camera angle for me to do this, but it's the only way I could get my system set up so you can see what I've got. Okay, right off the top of the pile, not in any particular order, I have this tulip that I made. It is, it would be fine as a table runner. It would be fine as a banner. From a door. In fact, I think I did make it. There's a thread on it. I think I did make it uh, purposely to hang on my door at springtime. And that's where it did hang. Just getting some fuzz off of it. And uh, I really like it. Um, but I think it would make a good gift for somebody too. Uh, especially, you know, springtime runners. I think that would be good. So I'm going to just set it to the side it a little bit. I may throw these into the dryer to get some of the fuzz off them because they've been in storage. And I'll put this over to the side here. And so that pile is going to be my possible gift pile. Now this is actually a quilt, a small quilt. It is a, I think it was my own design. Yeah, and it looks like I used scraps for it. And I had this kitty fabric that I used. And I'm not sure which way is up. Again, a little awkward in here to show the whole thing to you. Um, cute quilt. The backing's really nice, which makes it also sort of a reversible quilt with the cat fabric. Um, I quite like it. But I think it could be, oh, I've got this one labeled. I made this in 2020. I don't often label my quilts, but I did label this one. I know, don't curse me out. I should be labeling my quilts. So that one, it's a small quilt. So I think I'm gonna put it to the side. Again, it's one that I think could be a gift. room over here. I know I'm probably off the camera shot. I'm just putting that over there. Okay, moving on. All right, this one is ugly. <laughs> yeah, I don't know when I made this, but I can say it was early in my quilting journey. Uh, it looks like it was my attempt at making a table runner without a pattern. I think I quilted it 
it looks like I did sort of a stitch in the ditch kind of a thing. Would have been long before I ever had Lucy. And, you know, and it's not faded. Those were the colors that I used. So I think I just put together random fabrics from my Canadian fabric collection and uh, made this. Definitely a table runner. I may have used it hanging on my front door at one time during, you know, Canada Day, you know, kind of thing. Um, this one is one that I don't think I would gift to anybody because there are errors in it. It's a little wonky in places. Um, maybe a donation for something. I don't know what. I don't know who I would donate a table runner to. Here's another table runner. Okay, this was early. I actually, I think I did the feathers on my embroidery machine. I was experimenting with that. Um, the back of it. Yeah, I don't particularly like it. I tried to fancy it up by doing some machine embroidery on the end, and that came out a little crooked. I probably had just gotten my embroidery machine at the time. Ew, my binding really sucks on this one. The corners are bad. Um, yeah, and it looks... I think I bound it from the front to the back first instead of from the back to the front by the looks of things. Um, yeah, this one I would not give to somebody as a gift. Um, I think it's ugly. I think the fabrics in it are kind of like ugly as well. So I'm going to put that in the donate or whatever pot for that. So that's there. Okay. And I'm blowing little pieces off of everything over here. I'm just going to make a little bit more room. Sorry, I'm going to do the shot again. Okay, let's look at the next one. This one was one. I kind of like it. It was my attempt at applique. It was a, a shop hop kit at some point in time. I don't remember where I picked it up. I think I bought it in a little Mennonite quilt store in the St. Jacobs area. Um, this turned out not too bad. I kind of like it. I used to have it hanging on my wall behind my 3D printers, but I've changed that setup now. And uh, I did not do a binding on this. I did one of those, uh, what do they call it? Envelope uh, or pillow pillowcase old one, you know, where you turn it inside out and all that stuff. And uh, this could be a gift for somebody. It really could, I think. So in the possible gift pile, what do we have here? Ooh, I don't know. Okay, what was I thinking with this fabric? I obviously wasn't. It's okay. Um, I think I just made it up out of my head, something quick. But let's take a look at this background fabric. I think it's K Facet uh, fabric. Not one of his brighter colorways, if it is. Honestly, I don't remember. Um, it's not bad, though. I just... This one I might hesitate. I did a little simple in the ditch quilting on this domestic machine back and forth. Um, the binding on it, again, is not perfect. Yeah, corners are a little rough. Um... I don't think I would be happy donating, giving this to somebody, but again, donation pile. One. See my there. This is a little thing. Oh, I guess I was getting very patri patriotic about something. And so I made this little table topper. It's cute. Um, obviously I was, oh no, I did that. I did the quilting using the embroidery machine on it. And yeah, I used the embroidery machine to put the wording on it. Um, it's a cute little nothing. It might make a nice candidate gift for somebody. Now, this one I did, I think it was a Pat Sloan free pattern uh, back when the Ukraine was first attacked by Russia and the whole bit, and we were all showing our support. So this did hang on my front door for a little while. Um, I'm kind of impressed with my quilting. Again, that was just, uh, I think I used a ruler for this and I did it on my domestic machine. Um, need to blow out some of the wrinkles in it. Uh, I think this would make 
this would make a nice gift for somebody. The colors are okay and everything like that. So we'll put it in the gift pile. Okay, this one you saw not too long ago. This was the African fabric. You remember the whole song and dance number I did about the African fabrics, but the quilt it's, or the table runner itself turned out nice. Um, it's not really my style, but I want to try African fabrics. And I think I did this one on the embroidery machine as well, the quilting. Yeah, I did. It, it's very layer off it large feathers uh strip on it or no i may have done this on lucy yeah this was probably done on lucy using the quilt path program um i mean it's okay it's you know it, it will work as a gift okay this one is actually a quilt and i'll show it to you but this is one i don't think i need in this pile they got in this pile though. This one I did oh, a couple of years ago, probably, because I saw this panel with the outhouses and I thought that was really cool. I can't tell if you can see it or not, but yeah. And it was a, was it a kit? No, I bought the fabrics separate for this. And um, it might make a fun gift for somebody if I knew somebody that was into outhouses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe they have an outhouse. Maybe they want to hang it in a bathroom. I don't, I don't really know. Um, but, okay, I'm going to put it in the gift pot. Ah, uh, what's this? This is, okay, Halloween. Now, I do decorate for Halloween. I'm going to set, set up a separate pile for anything that comes up that's a Halloween thing because I'll, I'll probably use them. This, I think, turned out very nice. I think I hung this on my door. Uh, I did use my embroidery machine to make the blocks, and then I just added strips of fabric in these colors. I'll show you what's down here near the bottom. Again, it is a table runner, but it also works as a door banner, and I like it, and I like the colors in it, and I like the embroidery I did on it. So this one is a keeper for me. So I'm just folding that up and that will go in the keeper pile over here. Here's another Halloween one. Uh, this one I did this year. It was a panel. I like using panels for things that are, you know, seasonal, that kind of thing. I did put it on Lucy. Now it's very densely quilted, mainly because I should have made uh, the quilting pattern in the quilt path a little bigger, but there's the back. I like it. I'm keeping it. I'll put it on display in October uh, as my fall slash Halloween seasonal decor. So that one's a keeper. It is heavily um, quilted though, because you can feel it. This is not a fluffy quilt. It is a very, um, very stiff quilt. Strings on it too. All right, so that's going in the keeper pot. So part two of that I'll put up next week. Uh, okay, so subscribers quilt of the week. This lovely creation comes from one of my longtime subscribers, Nancy Ryan. And well, take a look. This week's quilt from a subscriber comes from Nancy Ryan. And Nancy shows us this beautiful quilt with the kitties on it and a very Christmassy looking quilt as well. And I think it's really cute the way the cats are all dressed up in Christmas garb and even a couple of mouses on there. But this is what Nancy writes. She goes, super, super fun in the hoop project from Lunchbox Quilts. Not particularly fun for the wonderful Bobby at Back Porch Quilting, but I was thrilled with the specialty quilting she did on her long arm. So let's just take a look at that. Um, it, in this picture, it's a little difficult to see what that specialty quilting is. Uh, let's see if we can blow it up a little bit more. Get in closer. Okay, so you can see that within each around the cat, she has lines radiating out, which I think gives it some depth. And uh, 
here, which is very hard to see because it blends in so well with uh, the sashing pieces, is, um, well, I'm not sure what it is, but it does look very nice. Yes, I can see why this would be a difficult quilt to quilt because, you know, you've got a lot of obstacles in your way. So really, if you're going to do it as a custom, it's going to take a lot more effort and planning than just doing an edge to edge design. But overall, the quilt's very nice. It turned out very lovely and something I'm sure, Nancy, you'll be very proud of and will be a great addition to your Christmas decor. Thanks for sharing it with us. OK, so now we're going to the YouTube of the week. And this was really interesting. It was called Seven Lies Quilters Tell and Why We Believe Them. Did you know that quilters lie? Well, according to So the Distance, we have many lies that we tell ourselves. So we're not really lying to other people, but we're lying to ourselves about things about our quilting. She has a video out called Seven Lies Quilters Tell and Why We Believe Them quilting truths and I found this so relatable um, she goes through the things that we tell ourselves like oh we're not going to buy any more fabric because we're going to use up what we have already and a whole bunch of other kind of untruths that we if we say them enough times we believe so this is a really great video I'm sure everyone can relate to this and it just makes us think about what the true feelings or what our truths are in the quilting world. So that's seven lies quilters tell and why we believe them on So the Distance. Okay, so future projects. Well, actually, this isn't the future. You've already seen it done. And that was the Whimsical Turkey Table Runner. Uh, it's a design by Juju. So I thought you'd like to know the details behind that particular creation. This week's future project is one not too far into the future because I've already started working on it. In fact, at the time of recording this, I might actually have it done and you've probably already have seen it. But nevertheless, I want to bring your attention to where you can pick up this design if you're really interested in it. It is a Designs by Juju. It is an in-the-hoop embroidery design, so you need to have an embroidery machine to complete this. And it's just a lot of fun. Now, at the time when I bought it, it was on sale, as you can see up here. The regular price was $18 American, but it was on sale for almost half the price, $10.80. And one thing about Juju Designs, they often put many of their uh, popular designs on sale. So, you know, if you're interested in this, just wait a while. It may come up on sale or on another special sometime down the road. Um, their instructions are always very easy to follow. If you've done any in the hoop uh, style applique on your embroidery machine, you will have no problem completing this project either. Um, it's done in pieces and then you sew the pieces together on your regular sewing machine and that's very easy to handle as well. So I love it and I'm hoping that uh, this might make a gift for somebody special. So at this point, I sometimes have a teaser for an interview I've done in the past week. Well, I don't, don't have an interview this week um, beyond the one that I sort of did with Kim, but that's for So Chatty this week. Um, so I don't have an interview with anybody this week, but I do have one. In fact, after I um, actually I'm doing this video in the future, I'm doing it one day ahead of when you'll see it. So I have scheduled just after I get this all done, an interview with a person that I think you're really going to love. And that's all I'm going to say. So stay tuned. That interview will probably go up. Well, not probably will go up next Tuesday. OK, so that takes me to online fabric stores. And this one is called Threads That Bind. This week's online quilting store is called Threads That Bind, and it's located in Maxwell, Ontario, which is in around the Ottawa area. Uh, so this is their opening page, and you can see that they also have a physical brick-and-mortar store as well. A picture of the outside of it. There's fabric, pre-cuts, tools and notions, books, and then what's new, and some quick links. And they have a newsletter as well. Okay, well, let's go right into and check out their fabric. See how they organize this. Okay, fabric, cotton. Um, you can list it alphabetically. You can sort it alphabetically. 
by price, low to high, high to low, old to new, date new to old, best selling. Okay, well, um, right off the bat, I'm going to say I'm not impressed with how they have organized their fabric because it would mean that I would have to know the name of the fabric uh, if I want to find something quickly with this. But if you like to browse, this might be for you. Now, I'm looking here at the price prices, and I'm assuming this is a half meter. We'll check that out in a minute. $9.98, $10.98, $9.98, $10.98, $10.98, $10.98. And let's go to another page, 1098. So it looks like their prices are on the upper end of the scale. It's about $21 a meter on average. Okay, well, let's just pick something and take a look. Um, yes, it is by half meter. So, and these are batiks. Batiks, it's $21, but their other fabric was about that as well. So they are on the higher end of the scale. So... I wonder what their shipping policy is. Let's just take a look down here and see if they have one. Here we go. Shipping rates. Like to see that. That's two things I like here. One, their fabrics and meters because it's a Canadian store. And two, we have shipping rates right up front. And so here you go. If your order is up to just under $50, it's $16 shipping. Up to $100, 21 shipping. And up to 150 27 and after $150, free shipping in Canada. These are their shipping rates. Um, you get a better deal the more you buy, okay, basically. So, yeah, shipping rates, Canada Post, there's not much you can do about that because they're pretty much limited by what it's going to cost them through Canada shipping. Okay, so we checked out their fabric. Let's go back again to their fabric. And as I said, it looks like you'd have to do a search by a brand name. Um, and is there a search feature? Yes, here we go, search products. So let's put in Northcott and see what they have. And nothing comes up for Northcott. Oh, yes, it does, though, right here. Well, that's interesting. I thought it wasn't nothing, but it did come up. Okay. So, yeah, they've got a good selection of Northcott. About 11 pages of it, I guess. Yeah. So, that's good. Um, good to know. They got a good selection of Northcott. Um, I'm not going to do a search on other things. Let's look at uh, pre-cuts. Let's see what they have for selection and pre-cuts okay several bundles some layer cakes jelly rolls prices are about standard yeah and they have four pages of pre-cuts not a bad selection but nothing i can't get somewhere else either so i'm not seeing anything that's grabbing me sticking out here that I immediately have to have. Some things are on sale. A mystery fat quarter bundle cotton. So does that mean that uh, you have no idea what's in it? A great deal and a surprise. A collection of cotton fat quarters in a variety of prints, suppliers, colors, or combinations. Six cotton fat quarters per bundle. Six fat quarters. Their picture's misleading because that's more than six in that picture. And if I hadn't read this, I might think I'm getting more than for that price. $24, six fat quarters. That's $6 a fat quarter. That's pricey. No, no, that's $4. Sorry. Six times four is 24. Yeah. So it's $4 a fat quarter. Well, that's not bad. Because the going price right now on average is around $5 a fat quarter. Okay, so some potential in there as well. Okay, let's check out batting and interfacing. Pellon fusible flea shape, shape flex, um, wool batting, king size in a package. Do they sell it by the meter? Lots of prepackaged. Hmm. No, it's looking like they don't sell it. No, they don't sell it by the meter. It's pre-packaged. I kind of stay away from the pre-packaged ones, unless the price is really, really good. Um, what else have we got? 
Well, it looks like they're probably a Janome dealer. And they are. They're not really showing a lot of machines here. Basically, one machine is all they have left. But they have accessories and things like that for it all. Check their second page. Okay, so they're not a huge... Oh, there's some more. Unless they have more in their store, um, they really don't have a lot of machines to choose from. Okay, what else can we look at? Um, thread. Let's see what they sell for thread. Wonderfill, Aurafill. Aurafill $17.95. Um, yeah, that might be slightly more than I pay for it. But, of course, I buy from Ultimate Sewing and I get the best prices there. Um, that's not a bad selection. Tulip Pink line of Aurafill. Um, don't know why under thread they have Beef Up Your Blenders Fabric Club. They have a club. Let's check that out. Uh, this club starts in January of 2023. Well, we're past that. Runs all year long. Each month, the fabrics will be from the same color family and be cut from a wide selection of premium fabrics such as canvas, melage, Toscana, grunge. The best part of this club is you get a great deal on some fabrics. Your fabric bundle will be ready for pickup on the first Friday of each month. Uh, it tells you how to register for it. They charge $20 if you need it shipped. It's $35.95. Uh, did they mention, oh yeah, join our monthly club and receive three meters of coordinate blenders, one meter each every month. So you're getting three meters of fabric, three meters of fabric for $35.95. If you pick it up at the store, that's just over about $11 a meter. Well, that's not a bad price but you're at their whim and it's splendors yeah doesn't sound that exciting to me i don't think i would that would appeal to me um let's take a look at patterns and they have a few and they're about the standard price there's 10 pages of patterns okay so that's a good selection of patterns um a peek at christmas no page found there. Okay. Now that makes it interesting. What about um, Christmas fabric? Okay. They do have some. And they've got patterns mixed in there too. Mm, seven pages to choose from. Not a bad selection. Yeah, and they've got some pre-cuts as well. Okay. So, classes. What are they offering? Mystery Quilt Club. Mystery Quilt Club. Color Wash Basics. And that's it. And they look like they're in-person classes. Doesn't really say. Uh, supplies will be provided, but you will need to bring along your fully charged camera phone. It's an in-person workshop. Huh. Interesting. I don't know what you do with the camera. Maybe because it looks like they're... They says, she has agreed to show you her methods for organizing your blocks to create a pleasing color wash effect. So this has got an actual person at it. It's on October the 11th. From very simple to more complex strategies, she will use her own quilts to illustrate a variety of ways to incorporate color wash into your own quilts. There will be some hands-on activities and lots of audience participation. So I guess you can uh, video this presenter as well. That's a little different. I've not seen something like that. They do have sew alongs. And are these... Uh, that one's passed. Um, oh, so I guess I don't know. Do they supply you? Oh, yeah. So I guess you can do this for nothing online. 
because it looks like it's showing everything right here. Okay, well, that's not a bad idea. Events, anything? Nope. Oh, wait, yes, nope. In September, nothing. Okay. Um, and we talked about shipping rates. Okay, so overall, threads that bind. Um, it's not standing out for me as something that I would um, necessarily order from. Uh, if I was in the area, I might visit their physical store. Um, their prices are on the upper end of the scale. They seem to have not a bad variety. I don't like the way the fabric is organized. I have to do a lot of browsing, but if you like browsing, you'll probably be happy with it. So overall, it's okay. I'm not going to get that excited about it. Um, that's threads that bind. So that brings me to the end of this episode of the idiot quilter. Uh, just a reminder that on Wednesday this week and Every Wednesday, we have Sewing with Stephanie and Stephen. Check that out. Also, um, I don't think I mentioned it, but I should mention it to you, that there is a special project happening. In collaboration with three other content creators, Stephanie Stitches, Shannon Way of Slay Arts, and Sean Ironmonger of The Guy Who Sews, the four of us, we call ourselves the 4S Club, that's S, we have put together a little collaboration that involves you. We have each picked three patterns. The three patterns we have picked are different from each other. It is your job to tell us to figure out by voting which pattern we're, we're going to do. Each one of us is going to do a different pattern from the three that we've listed. Boy, that gets complicated to explain and it's not that hard. So, there is a video about all of this that will explain it a little bit more clearly than I'm doing right now. And there's a link to that in the show notes below if you haven't seen it already. And we have the same video on each of our channels, but the patterns are different and there is a voting set up. And you go to the community tab and click on that and you will find the poll where you will vote for the pattern you want each of us to do. It, you'll also have information as to where you can get those patterns online. And if you wish, some are free, some are paid patterns in case you want to sew along with us. Uh, the video states how we're going to run this and what future videos you can expect for us talking about what we're working on. So that's something a little different, something that's some fun and something where you get a chance to have a say in this as well so do check that out and as i said i've got a link to that in my show notes below so check it out okay i hope you have a great week uh, go out make something that makes you happy and we'll see you later thanks for coming bye bye